McKenzie of Laura McKenzie Gallery, and I'm here to share with you my five things I wish someone would have told me when I first became an artist. So number one is find your mentors and your community. I, when I was a young artist, I was in art school at university and it was going really well. And, but you know, I didn't understand anything about possible careers in the arts. I knew I was doing well. I really enjoyed my classes. I was learning, I was growing. I had these amazing painting instructors who, who just, you know, they were recognizing me and they were putting me up for awards. And it never occurred to me to stop in their office hours and just talk to them and say, wow, I love creating art. I'm so happy here doing what I'm doing. What does a person like me do after graduating? What type of opportunities are there for me in the arts? Never thought about it. It was a huge missed opportunity to talk with others and instead of trying to figure everything out on my own. So the number two thing that I wish someone had told me when I first became an artist is to ignore the stereotypes. And this was part of my problem with number one. I didn't believe that there were actual careers as an artist. I believe the stereotype that an artist was a starving artist stereotype, somebody who is, you know, living in poverty, someone who's disorganized, someone who, who maybe their personal life is more like a soap opera. And luckily over the years, I have realized that actually to be an artist, you need to be organized. You need to have your personal life somewhat in order. You don't have to be a soap opera. You don't have to be, um, it's really important for an artist to be organized and be on top of things and to not live up to the stereotype of the disorganized, starving artist. So that is number two. The number three thing I wish someone had told me when I first became an artist is that your art really matters. Starting Laura McKenzie Gallery, I wasn't sure what kind of feedback I was going to get from my collectors. I wish somebody had told me long ago that your art is not just something that people buy because it matches their couch. That wasn't the kind of feedback I've gotten from my collectors. They don't say, oh, your painting looks great with my new chair. Instead, they're telling me things like, your painting got me through a really dark and dreary winter, or your painting really is a, a source of solace that brings me back to a really happy time that I had in my life. So that is something that is really exciting and really important to me. And it's, it's been a joy to interact with my collectors and to learn those things. Number four, Fourth thing that I wish someone told me when I first became an artist is don't be afraid to share and be vulnerable. You do not need to have a facade of perfection. You do not need to, you know, you can absolutely, um, you know, share more of yourself in your art. And I, and I think that that helps to make art so much stronger and in life too. You know, I, there was one point where I went to my doctor to speak to him about anxiety that I was experiencing. And he said to me, so is everyone else. You know, your peers, the people that I'm seeing are coming to me with the same experiences that you're having. And I said, really? I had no idea. And he said, of course you don't. No one likes to talk about it. And that was a huge light bulb moment for me. And I said, well, maybe we should. And that had never occurred to me before. So since then, every time I've shared any type of struggle or things like that, instead of someone going, oh, and distancing themselves from me, I've always gotten responses from people that were more like, me too, or so does my son, or so does my wife, or so, you know, so does someone important to me. And I've, I've always found that I've been able to create stronger connections, which is, of course, what life and art is all about. So number five, last but not least, I wish someone had told me when I first became an artist, don't take yourself or your art too seriously. At the time, I was holding myself to the standards of trying to create, um, you know, just, just trying to be important. And I felt that I had to do certain things to be important and that there was this external definition of fine art. And I had to ask myself, does your each painting meet that definition and will it be seen as important and fine art and all those things? And then I realized how, how defeating that was. 
And eventually along the way, I learned to just come in here and just paint. That's it. I just come in and paint. And it, it brings so much joy and it brings life to me and to my paintings. And I think that is why when my paintings go to my collector's home, that is why they tell me that it really does, it, you know, it does improve their space. It improves the room. It raises the energy in their room. It, it brings tranquility in their home or in their workspace to themselves and the people that are there with them in their space. So it's really uplifting. And I don't think my art would be very uplifting if I were sitting there painting, still wondering whether it was good enough to be called fine art, whether it met certain standards. So that's it. Don't take yourself or your art too seriously in life. That's a really important rule for me that I live by. So thanks for watching this video. And um, that's it. That's my five things I wish someone had told me when I first became an artist. Have a great day.